Hello there, and welcome back to my channel. This is Know Me One Plays. Please remember to hit like, subscribe, and that bell icon to be notified of when I upload. But for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy today's episode. Welcome back, everybody, to Builders of Egypt. Because this game gets updated so much, and quite regularly by the creators, I've had to restart this game. But I have learned many things from the previous playthroughs. Chris B from Germany has made a suggestion to make sure, and he told me to make sure that there is a stockpile for each location that is needing to either store resources. So making sure that straw can go in, has a place to go, pottery has a place to go, same with clay and bricks. So we are going to start again and we're just going to get straight into it. Okay, let's click start. Okay, so just like before, we need to gather 5,000 bread, export 1,000 bricks, gather 1,000 pottery and gather 75 dwellers. So we don't actually need a very big encampment. And we're going to, we are going to follow the tutorial just so we can get through this level and move on to the next. Click on the right arrow to go further or press spacebar. In ancient Egypt, the idea of currency was unknown. The work was paid for with bread and beer. To simplify this mechanics, treat these resources as the cost of placing buildings and exchanging wares. You can find their icons in the top panel. You can get bread, beer, mainly from trading and collecting taxes, but these are not a reliable source of income, so make sure you do not run out of them because in such situation, you will not be able to further develop your settlement. Okay, so let's continue. The settlement development should start with designing a grid of streets. Select a road from building list and place a street where you will be building your settlement. Remember that the first basic resource is water, so it is best to practice to build a settlement along the river. Okay, if memory serves me correctly, it is not B. <laughs> oh, it's T. So let's just follow this grid. And it's WASD to move. And we have to build 81 roads. Okay, now we need to build a house, which is a shortcut for B. And let's just see. Okay, I think. And is it R to rotate? Yes, it is. Now music has been turned off for this game only because it is copyrighted music so other people who are wanting to upload this to YouTube please be aware. The building placed like this will encourage immigrants to settle in your city if it has sufficiently high levels of satisfaction which as you will notice in the later game is not easy to achieve. The arrival of the first inhabitants is announced by a message in the bottom right corner. Remember that you can always demolish a building. Refund depends on the level of difficulty. Note that removing buildings at a later stage can be tricky as you can shatter the delicate economic balance. Let's practice demolishing on this road because we don't need it here. Remove the highlighted section. So our demolish tool. Your dwellers need to be protected against fires. Select the fire station. And the shortcut for that is there is none. Okay, and we're going to rotate it. We're going to rotate it to here so that there is a couple of entry points. Note that after clicking on the fire station icon in the bottom right corner, a filter will appear showing the coverage of the settlement with the range 
given of the given buildings. This building protects other buildings from fire, but remember that the effectiveness of the protection reduces as the distance increases. It is a good idea to build a fire station at relatively small distances from each other for better protection, better coverage results in fewer fires and reduces the consequences of them. So everything in this green section is pretty much, I guess, protected. It is high time to look at the buildings you have constructed. Use the right mouse button to select a house. The details of the building will be displayed. If you look from top, you will notice the things listed below. Current war warnings, the name of the building. Okay. So, name of the building. Current warnings, I guess, is like these. Or here, no dwellers. Level of the building. The capacity of the house and the number of available workers. Zero and zero. Risk of de disasters of like illness, crime, fire and disaster. The required resources to raise the level of the house, collect the resource and current access and current access to buildings. Excellent. Okay. Note that each house has its own range which determines the maximum distance to the building in which a dweller can work. In the case of hard to reach workplaces such as mines, it is worth considering building a work camp, which is mostly a self sufficient unit. In order to upgrade the house, the well should be placed in accordance with the requirements we have just observed. Build a well in close range of the house. And this has an access point from all four sides. So we're just going to flip it right down there. The house will be upgraded if it has been completely occupied is by the road and meets all the conditions. Remember that if there is something missing from the previous level in the next level of the house, the house will be degraded to the previous level after a while. Which is something I was having trouble with in my previous game. It kept They all kept going backwards and forwards. Each city needs an organized production for its growth. Start from the production of basic resources necessary for the upgrade of the house. Build a clay pit. Okay. Okay, so let's make sure that we are able to access it. Note that each building requires workers to be assigned from their homes. Production buildings have a minimum number of employees below which they don't start working and which a maximum number of employees production reaches 100% efficiency. Keep an eye on the workforce in the settlement by building new houses. The production of wares may require the construction of more than one building within the production chain. You'll find information about the building by right clicking on it. Okay. So we have natural resources, they're 37, but we're going to need to build a storage yard. So we go over here and we need a, or a stockpile. These are also accessible from all four sides. So we'll place that there. Okay. Note that the stockpile does not have a predefined range and can pick up orders from the other end of the map. Therefore you can control the stockpile policy by clicking the rice the right mouse button on the building. Okay, so when they're highlighted red, that means this is what we are going to be collecting and exporting, I believe. So this is... So what I actually want to do is I want to... Turn that off. Turn that off, but then turn that on. Because I just want clay to go into this one. And we will click it to export. Next, we need to make a brick maker. 
Okay, let's just make sure. Okay, so they have two entry points, one on either side, so that should be fine there. Some production buildings require a specific condition of locations. Wells must be built by the river, quarries by the hills, and woodcutters require forests, which may be depleted if you devastate the entire woodland. Remember that buildings within a single production chain must have been connected to the same road network in order to be able to supply each other with the production using the stock. Oh, okay, so they have to be on the same road. Maybe that was my issue from last time because I don't think I had them all allocated to the same road. Okay. Inhabitants need food to improve their houses. As before, we need to create another production chain. So, we'll start off with a fishing wharf. Which, unfortunately, you can only build one. So, we're going to place it right here. And now we need a granary. And we're going to just rotate that to make sure it goes there. And we need a bazaar, which is like a marketplace. And we'll rotate that to go there as well. The finished wares can be used to build a monument if the mission requires it or can be traded away. To do this, you need to set up a trade route. To do so, click on the region map icon at the top of the bar. Okay, let us do that. Here we go. Oh, okay. Map, that is. Okay. So, you're in the region map. You'll find your settlement on the map and all other known settlements. You can only make contact with some of them at the beginning. But this situation may change during the mission depending on the results of your choice. So, this is our city here. I believe we have to go to Abydos. Right click on the settlement. Oh dear. Okay, maybe if we zoom in. There we go. Okay, right click is actually left click. I forgot about that. We want to open a trade route for 200 bread. Trade route has been opened. From time to time, a trader or a ship will come to the city to exchange their wares. At the beginning of each year, the amount of purchased wares is reset. If a trader exchanges all his goods during the year, he will not arrive again until the next one. You must first determine whether you want to import, export, or do nothing. The default option blocks the possibility to import and export. To change it, click the economy tab. So, we need to export bricks. We don't need to worry so much about clay unless we have too much of it. Okay, um, so we need to go to the economy tab which is flashing up here. And the goods you already produced you can export to Abydos are the bricks. So we want to click on the export. Excellent! If you want to keep bricks in a specific stockpile you can set it in the options in its options in the information card. Knowing the basics of the game, you can focus on completing the mission to recall the conditions of victory. Go to the general tab. So this is the mission here. We have 14,000 out of 5,000, so we're good on that. We do need to export a thousand bricks, gather a thousand pottery, and we need a few more dwellers. Excellent. Okay, let's go back to the map. Well, to our town. Okay, we are going to pause. Because now we have set up our little town. We need some more people. But I also want to create a new stockpile. Granary stockpile. So we're going to place that there, we're going to place some more roads there, and we are going to make this brick an export brick, and I would like one more.
and I've lost it again. There it is. And T. And this one is going to be straw. So we have set up a location for straw, for clay and for bricks. We will be eventually needing one for pottery as well. Okay, so let's go to T. Actually, no, we are going to go to farms. I'm going to place a farm there and a farm there. There and there. going to add a short part there and a short part there. Okay, let's play and let's see how many more people we are going to be needing. So we have seven out of seven, we have zero workers. 7 hours 7, 7 hours 7, 7, 7, 7, and 7. So we definitely need... They only have access to one type of food. 6 hours 6 workers. 8 out of 8 workers. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, 0 and zero so let's add some more people in and that would be B for housing let's see I feel we could definitely go one there one there one there T for road just want to rotate it only because I do like at this angle even though it's accessible from all sides okay that should be enough so unfortunately it looks like the game doesn't want to actually have any ambient sounds today I have gone and had a look at the soundage the audio I should say Okay, let's speed up some time because we need some more people. And let's just rotate. And here they come. Yes, come and work for us. Give them a bit of time. Houses are upgrading. So we are needing people to be in our farms. So that we can get the straw to make the bricks. But what we might just do... Oh, we got a milestone. We're now a settlement. Hooray! have a hundred people okay we want a pottery it is a big thing um, so it has three points of access as well can't build there but we can build here and here okay we're gonna just place it there Are people upgrading or downgrading? So they're wanting to have access to one type of food. So we are needing this to happen. So everybody has water. I am 
going to place down a, another storage. I'm going to rotate it because I do like little hot at the back. And we are going to gather pottery. Okay, I was going to put... I, I think we will. I think I will gather and put another clay here. And we need to rotate it that way. And now... I will put... That like that. They want access to... A temple? Which we will get to. Oh, hold on. That is barley. I don't want barley. I want straw. I think straw is down a little further. Where is straw? That's reeds. Wheat. Flat. Turquoise. Copper. Limestone. Sandstone. Meat. Weapons. Ah, straw. Oops. <laughs> Let's put the right thing there. Okay, so the crops are going to go underwater and this and the Nile floods every year and with the flooding of the Nile that will revitalize our crop fields. And we're just gonna speed up time again. A messenger from the neighboring city has arrived. We need um we need to start producing these bricks. We want this town to just move along so let's just zoom out. The farmers are back in there producing food. We have a whole lot of people going off and I think they can go and collect hopefully the rest of that straw. We currently have 500 fish and nothing else and we are paying 405 loaves of bread. So pottery just needs um, clay and nothing else. Oh here we go! Thank you so much, Crispy, for all your information. This time, we seem to be making it work. And hopefully, we can produce enough bricks. Wow, these guys are going back onto balls like no tomorrow. So much straw. Oh no, houses are going up and down, up and down. 600 fish and nothing else. Okay, they want access to a temple which will be under this. We're going to place it right there. Hopefully, hopefully that, um, I didn't actually look at that. Okay, so it's at accessible from all sides. Okay, it looks like we're starting to make bricks, but I kind of want that bricks to happen a bit faster. So, we can't put it there, but we can put it here, and we will make the road go over here. And it's all on the same line, so it should work. We are, however, losing people. So I think we need to put in some more food. Roads. 
So as houses degrade, that means we lose our, res our um, population. So we do need to keep on top of that. So we have zero workers here at this point of time. Let's just have a look at this and our mission description. We have 900 out of a thousand. We've currently exploded 600 out of a thousand. And we're doing quite good. So I think this is just a shrine, so that means that it's not an actual temple, so they won't upgrade any higher than that. Okay, looks like we have still zero workers in this building. Temple 1 we probably need more houses, or more people. We could actually put in a couple more, or maybe not, and put in one. And escape, hit T. We'll put that like that. Yay! Victory! Congratulations! Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are. May the force be with you always. Goodbye!